Hello, everybody. Welcome back to what what is a human? And tonight we are now we are finally getting to the question that probably uh, drew you to the class. Not that uh, the last two sessions about biology were not amazing because they were, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but tonight we're we're finally getting to the the present that is the future or the future that is now. Uh, and we're going to start to delve into questions of AI and what does that mean for for what does it mean to be a human. But I want to introduce our congregant, uh, Jason Albert, who is uh, the global. I, I just forgot it again. The global chief privacy officer. The global chief privacy officer at ADP. Uh, you, you are a lawyer yes. who who deals with privacy, but uh, does a lot with AI, and uh, and um, so it should be. Uh, quite enlightening, but most of you might know him through his wife, Katie, who is uh, who is everywhere at the temple. <laughs> they, Jason and Katie are new new congregants, but already uh, very much embedded here at Temple Right. So, welcome. Thank you. So uh, I, let's uh, pass around the, uh, the the sheets, and, and, and while I do that, and I'll share on the screen, we were talking about, well, could AI create a video? And Somebody was asking, well, how do I know I really am me? I'm going to get to that in a second. But there was a story last week where uh, a company was built out of $25 million because, you know, those scams where somebody calls and says, well, the president of the company wants you to transfer money and things like that. Well, they got the person on a Zoom call with like the president of the company, other executives, all who were AI generated. Oh, and the person so thought they were the real executives and so then wow. then transfer the money so so there is this this real concern about about uh, about deep fakes uh and uh uh and and you know what what those what those uh what those mean for us but uh let me uh let me start here with uh uh this this question well you know am i am i real so uh, the first question I have is, well, are we all artificial intelligence? And, you know, Rabbi, in, in one of his sessions earlier on the course, you know, talked about, you know, the creation of the uh, of the golem, right? Uh, and, the, and the rabbi who, you know, was, was, you know, who didn't have any sin and then created the golem and maybe the creation of the golem was a, was a, was a, was a, was a sin. And so, the, but that raises questions sort of like, are we all golems, right? And so... I don't know if someone wants to read the quote from uh, Psalm 139. Mine eyes did see my unformed substance, and in thy book they were all written. Yeah, so this is the one occurrence of Golem in the Tanakh, and and I chose the translation because it actually is in the in the in the new JPS, it like it, it it completely destroys. It's like a, like my limbs were formed or something like that. It doesn't get it doesn't have that sense of this unformed substance, this unformed block. But but you know the sense of we are all you know the the implication of this maybe is that we're all sort of golems and there's then there's something that makes us makes us human. And this is going to be interesting as we think about what that what that something is. And then. Uh, there's also another thing related to, to creation in the in the uh, uh, quote from Sanhedrin. So I don't know if somebody wants to read that. Rabbi Yohanan Bar Hanina says, "Daytime is twelve hours long, and the day Adam, the first man, was created, was divided as follows: in the first hour of the day, his dust was gathered; in the second, an undefined figure was fashioned." In the third, his limbs were extended. In the fourth, a soul was cast into him. In the fifth, he stood on his legs. In the sixth, he called the creatures by names he gave them. Mm -hmm. so, so I thought there were a couple of interesting things out here. So what was the interesting characteristic of the golem in, this, in the story that, that, that Rabbi shared with us? If you could remember back those. If you could remember yeah. that or... or... Uh, what what is a what is the distinguishing characteristic of a golem? Like if I ran to a golem on the street, how would I immediately know it was a golem and not a human? His horn, uh, un no. unformed, like a vague presence. I think not doesn't speak. No. Oh, golem no. cannot speak. Oh, okay. Right. So you know, to me, what's interesting here is all right on the on the second day again this un un you know defined figure. But in the sixth, he called the creatures by the names he gave them. 
thinking. So he can think, he can speak, he can he can he can do all he can do all that. And so and so it raises this question, well, do we think from a Jewish perspective that you know speech and thought powering speech is is the thing that distinguishes us from the golem and would we absent that be golems, right? From the you know, yes. you know, from from what it said here. It's granted on the last stage, which kind of implies some kind of evolution from the other steps. Mm -hmm. you know? Well well it, it 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 does. I mean this is this is actually hours of the day and this actually verse goes on by but you know by by the twelfth hour he's had kids with Eve, right? Like yeah, like right. like they, they they're moving pretty fast here. It's uh but it means it's about maturation. Right. Yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. ah. So, so, so that was it, it, at least to try to accept, put it sort of some context. All right, so you have to think, you have to speak to be human, and if not, you might just be this golem, this this creation uh, from you know from from dust, just like man was created from dust. The golem and rabbi story was created by the rabbi from 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 dust, and that leads us to the Turing test. Right, which I'm sure you all have heard of. Mm -hmm. So the question is, how can you tell if an artificial intelligence thinks? Uh, and so, you know, Alan Turing, you know, the guy, he was very involved in cryptography, you know, uh, you know, did a lot of stuff in World War II, was, uh, was sadly prosecuted by the British government for his homosexuality, you know, came up with this idea, well, it's really hard to know if somebody's thinking. But maybe there's a test that can tell us if we really pass that threshold. And the idea is you sort of put a veil. So I'm sitting here and I'm having an online conversation. I'm sort of typing on my computer to two entities, one of which is human, one of which is a computer, let's say. And the question is, can I tell the difference? Wow. Right. It's like, you know, it, 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 it's 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 it's. You know, it, it, it's basically like called the imitation game. Can I question two people and figure out which one's the man, which one's the woman? But the the, the and so the idea is, well, you know, can I do this? And and you know, at the time it was done, it was sort of thought, well, it's pretty obvious you're gonna you're you're gonna be doing this. But but the idea is, if you, if a computer can pass this test, and there's a lot of questions about what it means to pass this test, then that's evidence that it can think. So let me, I'm going to stop here and realize the question, what do you all think of this test? Is this a good test? Is this a bad test? Yeah. It's, it's, odd, test. it's odd to make consciousness the arbiter mm -hmm. of its own state yeah. of consciousness. You yeah. mean, do you mean like human being conscious? Yeah, there's a human being who's the ultimate definer of what ends That's up being, being the thing for consciousness. Good. Right. So what what standard do we have besides ourselves to make a decision? Right. There? I know. What else? Uh, Computer? Right. No. Yeah, that's a tough one. To me, to me, it's sort of interesting because I remember reading about this test 40, 50, about 30 years ago. Okay? So when I was in college. I know. And um, uh, people had this thought that they, you know, computers really do this for a very, very long time. I think a lot of people feel that it can happen now, but they're not necessarily willing to attribute a win to the computer uh, they may have been able to do several decades ago. So I think I moved the goalpost a little bit on the poor computer, to be honest with you. If I understand this correctly, the, the definition of being human is, is a cognitive one. No, we can answer the questions, you know, cognitively, so it has nothing to do with emotion. Feelings, yeah, or right? even physically, as early there, there's no uh taking in of food and waste and right. reproduction, like yeah, none of that's going to involved here. Like kind of like moving the goal a little bit because yeah. for decades it was this. And like, <laughs> so, your point, oh, does it feel? Or does it, you know, yeah. does it yeah. relate in the way that people relate? Does it grow? Does it change? Does it eat? Does blood like this? Other, other, this seems like, is it, unless I'm misunderstanding, because I don't know this test, is it, is it, it an intellectual I didn't know answer to the question? Well, well it's, it, it, yeah, so it's interesting, right? I think there are two things. I think the first question is, I, I think there are two questions that you all are asking. The first question is, is this the right test in the sense of if you, should we accept Turing's premise that what we're interested in is, can the computer think? And you're saying, well, no, because great, maybe it can think, but it can eat. Uh, maybe it can think, but it doesn't have emotions. It might not be uh, able to react. It, it may be to others. Natalie, here in the chat, is 
Would a person in a coma be considered a human if she right. can't hold a conversation? Right. Mm -hmm. Or a baby right. or, or a child. Yeah. Or, and, right. and then the second question is, even if one accepts Turing's premise for the moment, right? Like what we're interested in is can the computer think? Is this a great test of whether it can think? Mm -hmm. Just being able to answer, have a conversation. Be able, to, be able to have a conversation, be able to fool someone on the other side of the veil. Right. So that, can we think about it? Like, did... Did you see the movie uh, Her a few years ago? Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. So they were, that was a computer that the person was talking to, right? Mm -hmm. A disembodied computer, right? In his ear, right? Uh, and had a had a relationship with, right? Was that an intelligence? So what's the question? Is is the computer an intelligence? Is the computer a, a, be a being? Is the computer, like, what's the word we want to use, right? Mm -hmm. Can the can the computer interact with me and not and me not know that that that's right. a computer? Yeah, that, I can't see it. You I can't. You can't. You can't. You can't see it, right? Like we're all like we're all sitting here on screens. You're you're typing away like you know on AOL chat and it's typing back. And the question is, do you do you do you know? Yeah, it's pretty scary. Right? Like, well, I mean, when we talk to when we talk to customer service for Verizon online, right? Yeah. It's not a person. I, it's probably not a person. That's when you get old. Representative. Yeah, you, you, I don't know about you, but I get frustrated a lot yeah. with customer service oh, with yeah. a lot of our different things because they they want you they want you to ask your question in a very specific way that they've been programmed to answer. Yeah. And if you don't, it, it's like they're training us how to talk to them, which I resent. And so and I get mad, which is not nice. But right. um, it makes me frustrated. Why should I have to structure my speech and my communication so that a machine can understand? But, or they but, ask a question and then they give three answers and you. But 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 but, but, but 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 there's a difference. So so when you have that experience, like the structured experience, where I can ask the chat for Alaska Airlines five things, it knows five things. So those are the five things I can ask it. <laughs> or you have I've got to form a proper Boolean inquiry to the chipsters. But imagine a world in which. Still a computer, but you don't have to do that. You can you can speak to it in a natural language. It will like that's why I brought up her. Like that. Yeah. yeah, it'll 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 comprehend you, mm -hmm. and it will give you an answer in in natural language. Is that enough? Alternatively, for what I mean, is I talk to humans who are being programmed the way those things are. So if you don't ask the question, the they just keep you got it. It. they keep that's repeating it. the same answer. I'm like, that's not what I asked. Can I ask the question? Because what I'm asking isn't an advantage. Like a politician on Meet the Press. Yeah, right. Or just, or just tech support. People tech support to get a person. They might not be able to answer. Also, I, think, I thought it was interesting. I came across my emails yesterday day before new research showing that um, AI people ask medical questions and they preferred the answer of AI to the physician. Mm -hmm. so, Why? Because because it's more direct or because the, the yeah the couching of it or however it was worded. Less I really insurance. Less tainted. Ah, I think it comes down to what you mean by think. You know, things I heard <clears throat> may have um, touched on this in terms of you know. It's not clear what what how, if it's defined in terms of how a human defines think. You mean you know it sort of becomes a circular. Yeah. No, no, it's a, I by the way have my answers to these questions, but I don't want to tell you. I want to. I want you to. <laughs> I, 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 you'll you'll find out by you'll find out by the end. Do, does somebody want to read the Descartes quote that starts below that? But, One other, sure. um, I guess it depends what we're actually asking of it. Are we asking of it whether we can tell the difference between? Whether it's a person or a human being, or are we asking whether the thinking of it is enough? Because so, so what Turing's asking is, can I tell whether it's a human or a computer? Yeah. One, and so I think there are two questions. First, is that is that evidence of thinking? In other words, if I can, let's assume a computer that passes Turing's test as Turing defined it. I I ask it questions. I have a conversation with it as I'm holding another conversation. Human cannot tell them apart. Cannot like. I cannot, for the life of me, figure out which one of these is human and which one of these is an artificial intelligence computer. Let's let's have it. Let's posit that as a as case. Assuming that's true, is that enough? That does that mean that whatever the artificial intelligence there is thinking? In other words, is Turing's test right for what he has proposed it as a substitute for? 
So it, is think is thinking here. Is uh, thinking is yeah. thinking. It, our brains just computers, and right. thinking is just rehashing okay. what what's already been programmed okay. in through just years of experience. Of and is thinking yeah. enough of, to make a human, which is what the I, overall. And I and I might put it a different way: is the process of constructing an intelligible response that is in natural language that is replying to whatever the question or the prompt is evidence of thought or is there another way to construct that mm -hmm. i think it's right. evidence of being able to generate um, information it's a, going forward. It's a it's a subset of thought right well we'll we'll, we'll you're, see you're, you're, you're presupposing the view as executing the thoughts as opposed to the thoughts happening because of other processes, it's just an artifact or an epic phenomenon of other pieces of biological processes. That I mean that that that's true. But yeah. what, but one of the things we're going to get to a little bit is how does generative AI work? And to me, what's interesting is to look at that and to think about however we construct sentences, whether I'm constructing sentences because I'm thinking in some philosophical sense or because some biological processes are causing these things with the thought. I think what you'll find is the way the generative AI does this and the way that we understand that we do it is very different, regardless of how you answer, right. answer, answer, answer that question. I feel like if I had a conversation, if this conversation could last for a couple of days, um, if I had a conversation with uh, an AI and, uh, and a person and I introduced my own, like, I don't know, traumatizing comment to this, to these two entities, I would expect the the person to come back, you know, the next day with some reflections and further thought upon how I affected them. What I don't know that I would expect that of the AI, right? Yeah, but yeah, no, I think I think you're right. And and look, I'm not sure. We're, I'm not sure. We let, it was sort of funny. Uh, the thing that I'm known for at work is that I have a song lyric for any comment anybody will make. <laughs> <laughs> And so we were waiting to join this meeting with the, with the executive committee and the person wrote, you know, you know, keep your eyes on this WebEx space. And so I'm like, you know, now I'm thinking about all these songs that involve eyes. And so since we were presenting on AI, uh, somebody went and asked ChatGPT, create a list of the top 10 songs that have eyes in the title. Oh, wow. So it was a pretty good list. It wasn't exactly the list I came up with, but, you know, it did, it did really well, except for song two. Which was I instead of E Y E. Every breath you take. Mm -hmm. A song that not only does not have eyes in the title has eyes nowhere in the lyrics, but it has a lot about watching. Oh, mm -hmm. wow! Function, wow. So so they, function. So they're they're wow. associating things correctly. It, it's but, associating things correctly, right? You can sense it, or I understood that, but it, but it, but it didn't get sort of the exact like i need eyes in the title it's not just like like all right watching is really associated with eyes because that's what we watch with and therefore this song is all about all about you know all about that so so it, it so it's not yet it's not yet it's not yet perfect so in in, in that yeah, way i give you a quicker response because the human is going to be thinking and making judgments before <laughs> ai will pick up information that's inaccurate as well as accurate yeah, yeah. but a human may Pause yeah. and think about right, it. right, and and we and we and, and a human has to think about well, are these song song titles are these cool songs or are they lame songs? And so you're thinking of, of how, how cool you look uh, yeah, in front my, of your my, friend. My, right? closest friend. my closest friend at work would say that I completely failed that test because she would say the coolest song that ever had eyes in it yeah. is "In Your Eyes" by Peter Gabriel, which was which was, awesome. which was which was which yeah. was not on my on my uh, on my on my list. I, yeah. I had eyes without a face, mm -hmm. you know. Then These eyes, but then there are I had blue eyes by you know by <laughs> pale blue eyes by uh, smoke in your eyes. <laughs> it was a little bit how you phrase your questions as to whether you get the right answer. Yeah, yeah, I could easily, I could easily prompt it to to give me a give me a correct answer. Like that would be an easy, that would be an easy thing to, that would be an easy thing to to fix. So, so I, oh, by the way, there's a question here in the chat from from Natalie, uh, Jason. Are you asking what is the essence of being human? Yeah, in, in in some sense, yes. Oh, yeah. That's that's where I want to get to at the end of this lesson, right? Like we like you'll you'll see you'll I have an answer. I have an answer to that, which which is 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 where I'm hoping we'll 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 go to, and then you can agree or disagree with the answer. But first, but we're I, just talking about the cognitive piece. Yeah, I also just want to throw out there that 
with your example of uh, AI coming up with this song about watching and not. Mm -hmm. um, in teaching, you often have that child who just looks at a question differently or mm -hmm. sees something differently and would come up with an answer like that. And mm -hmm. if you have the opportunity to question the child, well, you know, where does this come from? They could explain their their and, re and, and I could I and and I wasn't the one asking this question, but you could do the same thing, same thing with 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 Chad GPT. Um, why don't we read the Descartes quote? In, in part because like it's more there so to have a cool Descartes quote than to actually advance the ball much. So <laughs> I'll read it. How many different automata or moving machines could be made by the industries of humanity? We can easily understand the machines being constituted so that it can utter words and even emit some responses to action on it of a corporeal kind, which brings about a change in its organs. For instance, if touched in a particular part, it may ask what we wish to say to it. If in another part it may explain that it is being hurt and so on, but it never happens that it arranges its speech in various ways in order to reply appropriately to everything that may be said in its presence, even as even the lowest type of human being. So the question that I have first of all is like, was Turing the first person to go with the Turing test or no? should we call it the Descartes test? Right, this, this is 1600s that Descartes lived, yeah. right? Wow. 15, the 1641 yeah. was the first test. So he's thinking of robots already. All right. yeah. and, 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 and by the way, it's sort of funny, right? Because we look at this quote and we could say, I can't touch chat GPT. I can't ask, I can't, uh, I can't, you know, do any of that. And you can't, it, it would never tell me it's being hurt. But it can more or less reply appropriately to everything that may be said in its presence. Mm -hmm. So what? So is there a difference with AI right now? With AI, we're just thinking about text on a screen or or images on a screen. But what happens when they put that computer into a a, a humanoid mm -hmm. robot? Right? Yeah. Does that change? So you, change how? Mm -hmm. That's scary. Right. I mean, you can buy a thought, Sophia. Right, he's a humanoid. Yeah, I, yeah, and I've and I've and I have a one of my one of my uh, friends who I met when uh, when he and his kid and Simon's were in preschool together. It's like founded a company that's designed to do just that collaborative yeah. robotics. Right? right, that's that's their goal is to create a to create a, you know robot that has an artificial intelligence in it that can. So, so yeah, so so Descartes had a very similar idea, and and. You know, but again, it's sort of funny because, you know, they, he's talking about things he thinks a robot can do that probably a robot can't do today. But the thing that he says, well, you know, it can't do this is the one thing like we're sort of sitting here now saying, well, we see things yeah. it can do. It's sort of, yeah. you know, on the other hand, like if I could be that pressy in 500 years from now, like I'll, I'll take it. Right. Yeah. Like that's it's 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 pretty much a win. I think there are some dolls if you touch them a certain way. They say, you know, oh, I want my bottle or something. You know, yeah, they've changed. But but yeah, but it, but it's but yeah, but it's sort of it's sort of completely it's sort of completely uh, uh pro programmed, right? Yeah. So, um, does someone want to read about the Chinese remarks? This is one of the this is one of the critiques of Turing. Yeah. Oh yeah, certainly also was a, a prodigy. I was like twenty years old and managed to solve age-old logical problems. The guy was a titan in modern American analytic philosophy. I'll do it. Um, Cyril manages himself alone in a room following a computer program for responding to a Chinese character slipped under the door. Cyril understands nothing of Chinese, and yet by following the program or manipulating symbols and numerals, just as the computer does, he sends the appropriate strings of Chinese characters back out the door, and this leads those outside to mistakenly suppose there are there is a Chinese speaker in the room. The narrow conclusion of the argument is that programming a digital computer may make it appear to understand language, but could not produce real understanding. Cyril argues that the thought experiment underscores the fact that computers merely use synthetic, synthetic rules to manipulate symbol strings, but have no understanding of the meaning or semantics. Chinese argument, oh, the Chinese room argument. argument. Yeah, so, so this goes this goes to my point, which is like, Turing thought of this as a Can you, can you explain it a little bit more, the, the, the argument? Sure, sure. So, the, so the, argument is, the argument is this, right? So, you know, you, you know, guy standing in the room, he's got a computer that is programmed to be able to respond to, to Chinese. So like, 
We bring a Chinese speaker. That person slips a note under the four, four or like types on the computer, probably more likely. You know, Cyril goes and gets the right thing and comes back. Like he's responding perfectly, but he doesn't he doesn't understand Chinese. And 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 so and the and the presupposition here is like this computer he's using is programmed to follow sort of proper Chinese th- uh, you know characters and things, but it doesn't really understand technique. So you can do you can do syntax, right? I can order the words the right way, I can construct an yeah. intelligible sentence, I'll even respond to that. But that there's nothing necessarily here that uh, that shows I understand the meaning. No. Right yeah. or 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 you know or the or the semantic you know character what I'm saying. It, it it should be said that at the same time Wittgenstein is arguing that meaning is nothing but syntactic structure. Yeah. I was I was going to I was going to get there. I was, <laughs> I, it's literally it's a, rather interesting. Yeah. I, I I I wasn't able to my I I'm not deep enough into the into the philosophical text to try to figure out what Wittgenstein would have thought of the Turing test, but the question did cross my mind. Yeah, I'm curious that there, but yeah. yeah. Right, but you're right because because you're right. He he says it's all syntax. There is no such thing as as, sem- as semantic meaning. And so and so the question I again have is, what do we think? What do we think of this? Do we do we do we think this critique has merit? Does it have complete? Does it have complete merit? Would we be able to tell? What what did you say? There's no meaning. There well, is no uh, such thing as meaning. Well, it's, uh, Wittgenstein's point, which which oh, which I he can explain is much better than I can, was fundamentally that they're all problems of philosophy or problems of language and meaning, and we can never really be sure of meaning. So it's very hard to pose philosophical problems. Did I get that more or less? Yeah, basically, yeah. More or less right. It's so, all language games. All yeah, right. and it's all by convention that we agree upon. Yeah. Right, but the person, mm-hmm. the person who's getting the Chinese characters into the room doesn't understand them, just has a code right. on it, you know, that says what to read. When you see this, send this back, and reply with this. Output feels that this system has to join test. Yes, right. Yeah, 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 and right. And, and yeah. so it's like saying like it, 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 but so what? Like there's no understanding here. This is, well, this is. Right, I'm with it. What is understanding separate from? Yeah. yeah. You could also argue that this person, <laughs> this person in the room after long enough, right? If they're paying attention, can mm-hmm. start to, understand which Chinese characters map onto which mm-hmm. words mm-hmm. And, and would then eventually would be able to really pick up on it. Learn, learn, learn to read. Or for literally time, learn. Is that really necessary for this? I, it well, might not be. I mean, yeah. the potential and is just really Eric, everybody. before I lose the thread of what you said, is that the same concept? Am I way off or is there a tie to what you were what we were saying a few weeks back about um, calling, you know, in the, this infinite thing God? Is that semantics? Uh, yeah, that does tie into it, right? Because I mean, if a God's not infinite, what's a God, right? That, that part of the but the of word God or is is by definition infinite, right? Like as soon as we had the notion of the infinite, we never left it. But I it's mean, also that's, that's, but it's also semantics. I could true. call it infinite, I and mean, a lot of people did. But like that was the whole point of Abraham. He, he, you know, he, okay. he came up with so he figured it out. Um, wow. But is it isn't that what babies do also? Ba- babies just practice making all kinds of sounds, and then when the when the parents give it a, a positive response to some of the sounds it makes, and it realizes that's that's language, isn't that just? I'm struggling to learn Hebrew, and I feel that that's what that's some of that is like. Oh, I see that. Okay, oh, that means that. And with a bigger sound, we just say Great. you can say it's language, but it's also prelingual concepts. What do you necessarily only say is physical language? Uh, I think I think you would also say a baby no. um, doesn't know language, Good. but this is still applied because he they are formulating concepts, albeit rudimentary, but they're still forming them. Yeah. With which which the computer can't no I would say the computer Getting better at well, it. Yeah, not yet. It, it, yeah, yeah, it yeah, all that, depends on what it's programmed. It's really to do. not yet. That's the thing. Yeah. So, so we're we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna explore uh, a little bit about how uh, uh, large language models construct responses, and I think it it's important to keep this in mind because at the end we're gonna have to have a discussion about are the, are these in fact syntactic rules, right? So, in other words, is Cyril right? Is there semantic understanding? If there if there is semantic understanding of what sort, and and if there is semantic understanding, we understand what sort is that still enough for evidence of thinking? In other words, still back to like did Turing even have the right have the right right test? 
So I want to do two things. I want to show about a five and a half minute video that's about AI and machine learning, because this is meant to be more about than just generative AI. And then I'm going to go through a very interesting FT explainer that's going to show really how generative AI works with language. I think it's going to be interesting. So so this is this is our multimedia break. <laughs> um, so I have to you have to stop share. I have to stop. I have to stop share, and then I need to go share, and I have to go show sound. Share sound. And then I have to go find YouTube. Find my. Oh, you're there. I've got to find Chrome. Yeah, yeah, I have. I have. Yeah, it's I've done that, and I can go here, and I can expand the sky. Hopefully, this works. We're trying to do helpers. Okay. You got too much your sound. I've turned up my sound, but the, but the problem is that it's not. To make the video share an action. We did that, I thought. On the laptop at the bottom right, we usually have to pop the volume as well. Well, the volume's all, volume on the laptop's all the way up. Let's try it again. Stop share and just okay. Stop share. Yeah, let's try to do that again. All right. All so, is muted at the bottom of the screen. No, that's that's this computer. Well, not this one. All right. No, so great. This time is going to come from this computer. Okay. It'll be good. All right. So share screen, mm -hmm. share sound. All right. It should, it should work. Share. And now let's try this. No, nope. no, I'm all the way up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's another button. Does it sound up on YouTube? Yeah. Yeah. Sounds up on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I, didn't see that. Oh. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, the good news is if all else fails, this video is completely subtitled. Yeah. So 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 we can read we can we can read it if we need to. Are you? Right, I'll stop sharing. Are you able to? Are you yeah, able you to? Know, do it from there? You can try it here, but it's like okay. So you try it. Oh, yeah. Do you want? I could share. It. Try sharing from there. Yeah. What's the video link? Uh, the video link is youtube.com backslash watch question mark. B equals yeah, I did a sort search for this. But just I'll what's the name of the video? Uh AI versus machine learning. It's the it's that one. Make sure the sales are just came in. Yeah. Yeah, that would be a yeah. Sorry, folks at home. We will figure this out in a second. Well, what I would propose is we watch it and we just read the subtitles. Sure. Why don't Why don't Why don't we do Why don't we do that? Because it has it has very nice it has very nice. So go back to his share screen. It has very nice. It has very nice subtitles, and we can go. Has and I can I can read and we can read them. Yeah, okay. so. you'll read them to us because <laughs> some of us can't read the screen from here. I'm gonna log in to log in. Oh my god! <laughs> so again, like I can. I can... This, by the way, is not essential. We can skip this video if we need to. So this is. Well, we can know. AI versus machine, machine learning. Siri, how do you get sound out of this? How do you get sound? Oh, so you're getting answers. I'm going to try one more thing. I got an idea. Yeah. Maybe you could do it on your phone. I'm going to do it on my phone, yeah. try to do it in sync. There. There we go. Is that the right way to think about it? Yeah. That's, so you got to so tell me, you want to you do it? Yeah. Tell me what to start. Press play at the same okay. Time. Wow. 
Technology. All right, I'm going to press play That's now. Right. Artificial intelligence and machine learning. What's the difference? Are they the same? Well, some people kind of frame the question this way. It's AI versus ML. Is that the right way to think of this? Or is it AI equals ML? Uh, or is it AI is somehow something different than ML? Here's three equations. I wonder which one is going to be right. Well, let's talk about this. First of all, when we talk about AI, I think it's important to come with definitions because a lot of people have different ideas of what this is. So I'm going to assert the simple definition that AI is basically exceeding or matching the capabilities of a human. So we're trying to match the intelligence, whatever that means, the capabilities of a human subject. Now, what could that involve? There's a number of different things. For instance, one of them is the ability to discover, to find out new information. Another is the ability to infer, to read in information from other sources uh, that maybe has not been explicitly stated. And then also the ability to reason, the ability to figure things out. I put this and this together and I come up with something else. So I'm going to suggest to you this is what AI is, and that's the definition we'll use for this discussion. Now, what kinds of things then would be involved if we were talking about doing machine learning? Well, machine learning, I'm going to put that over here, is basically a capability. We'll start with a Venn diagram. Machine learning involves predictions or decisions based on data. Think about this as a very sophisticated form of statistical analysis. It's looking for prediction based upon information that we have. So the more we feed into the system, the more it's able to give us accurate predictions and decisions based upon that data. It's something that learns, that's the L part, rather than having to be programmed. When we program a system, I have to come up with all the code, and if I wanted to do something different, I have to go change the code and then get a different outcome. In the machine learning situation, what I'm doing could be adjusting some models, but it's different than programming. And mostly it's learning the more data that I give to it. So it's based on large amounts of information. And there's a couple of different fields within, a couple of different types. There is supervised machine learning. And as you might guess, there's an unsupervised machine learning. And the main difference, as the name implies, is one has more human oversight, uh, looking at the training of the data, using labels that are superimposed on the data. Unsupervised is kind of able to run more uh, and, and find things that were not explicitly stated. Okay, so that's machine learning. It turns out that there's a subfield of machine learning that we call deep learning. And what is deep learning? Well, this involves things like neural networks. Neural networks involve nodes and statistical relationships between those nodes to model the way that our minds work. And it's called deep because we're doing multiple layers of those neural networks. Now, the interesting thing about deep learning is we can end up with some very interesting insights, but we might not always be able to tell how the system came up with that. It doesn't always show its work fully. So we could end up with some really interesting information, not know, in some cases, how reliable that is because we don't know exactly how it was derived. But it's still a very important part of all of this uh, realm that we're dealing with. So those are two areas, and you can see DL's a subset of ML, but what about artificial intelligence. Where does that fit in the Venn diagram? And I'm going to suggest to you, it is a superset of ML, DL, and a bunch of other things. What could the other, other things be? Well, we can involve things like natural language processing. Uh, it could be vision. So we want a system that's able to see. We might even want a system that's able to hear and be able to distinguish what it's hearing and what it's seeing, because after all, Humans are able to do that. And that's part of what our brains do is distinguish those kinds of things. It can involve other things like the ability to do text to speech. So if we take written words, concepts, and be able to speak those out. So this first one involved being able to see things. This is now being able to speak those things as well. And then other things that humans are able to do naturally that we often take for granted is motion. This is the field of robotics, which is the subset of AI. The ability to, to do simple things, like tie our shoes, open and close the door, lift something, walk somewhere. That's all 
something that would be part of human capabilities and involves certain sorts of perceptions, calculations that we do in our brains that we don't even think about. So here's what it comes down to. It's a Venn diagram, and we've got machine learning, we've got deep learning, and we've got AI. So I'm going to suggest to you the right way to think about this is not these equations. Those are not the way to look at it. In fact, what we should think about this as machine learning is a subset of AI. And that's how we need to think about this. When I'm doing machine learning, in fact, I am doing AI. When I'm doing these other things, I'm doing AI. Like none of them are all of AI, but they're a very important part. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video and subscribe to this channel so we can continue. <laughs> Yeah, like maybe. Uh, he, he's somebody. Who, I think he's somebody who works for IBM, right? Yeah, it was it was an IBM video, but I but I just thought it was good because like we we spent a lot of time talking about generative AI, about to understand sort of all these other things, the predictive AI, the things that take data and find patterns and insights and information, you know, through those um, that are you know uh, you know that that you know from that perspective, right? And so there's just all these different all these different things, right? And and the other thing is because it's learning, right? You can't always always explain why or how it works, right? Like, which is to me the fascinating thing that we write these programs that are able to then change their programming in ways that we may not understand and we may not anticipate, right? Which is, I think, the other the other it's thing. The same thing about humans. We don't necessarily mm -hmm. necessarily anticipate what humans are going to do mm -hmm. or but how they end up. Right? So it's part of part of how I react when I hear some of this. So I think of the analogy of chemical farming versus organic farming. Like we think somehow that if we can mimic all of the chemicals that go into feeding food, feeding plants, that we can grow a garden as well as an organic farm can. And I think we can. We find things out like soil structure gets compromised. Um, the ability to retain water in that soil gets compromised because it's more than the constituent parts. And it seems like we're talking about capabilities, but they're all very uh, logical capabilities, right? And, and things that you can measure. But how about things you can't measure, like hearing the tenor of someone's voice and understanding that they're hurting? Or that they're yeah. sad, you yeah. know, and can, can you really program yes. that kind of emotion? Yeah. 100%. Really? 100%. Yeah. I'm not so convinced. 100%. Yeah. And if not now, maybe 10 years. Maybe. Wow. Maybe. Uh, but the thing that we can't, uh -huh. Really? Yeah. I, when yeah. people say things like, oh, you're so kind, you know, yeah, the way you talk And then they're sarcastic, just all, uh, they'll figure it out. Okay, they'll figure it out. Yeah. So, so it's interesting. So, so, your, so your thing is, right, all right, you're like, great. I might be able to program something that thinks or at least thinks enough to satisfy our friend, Mr. Turing, but what about emotion and caring? Right. I think that I think that's interesting. I have a different characteristic, as we'll get to a little bit, uh, that I think is the hard, is the hard part. Which uh, and I don't get. I don't want to spoil the. Well, that's what I was getting at earlier about like, what... does this, you know, do, is AI ever going to like dream, you know, create things in their in in a in their mm -hmm. metaphorical head that, you know, processes the information and and mm -hmm. creates some aha moment based on some. God knows what they, happens they, in our brains. They, uh, they figured how to grow proteins. They were trying to do that for, um, what, decades? Yeah. And they were able to ways to put that out with an AI a couple of years. Couple of years. Um, you know, that was a pretty, it's pretty good. creative insight that uh, he had been trying to do for decades. Also, what were they able to do with old proteins? Old proteins. Um, you, you know, so, yeah. What? So it's sort of interesting. What? There's a little more of a, it, it's a, med, a medical break. Incredible, incredible insight about how proteins can be folded. And, and um, yeah. yeah, I thought a lot of what AI is a tremendous amounts of data, enormous amounts of data, and discern patterns within that data with human beings, yeah. perhaps. Yeah, that, that that's exactly right. Right, the the predictive AI or the machine learning that was talked about in that video fundamentally is taking large data sets and finding 
patterns and learning from those patterns in ways like it, it fundamentally is fun is founded on linear algebra, right? Taking all this data, figuring out the relations, figuring out the vectors and the vector space, so what's closely related, what's distantly related, and finding and finding those. Look, uh, I loved linear algebra in college. If I had known how central was going to be to like all of our lives, I would have probably spent, spent, spent more time on it, right? <laughs> but 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 fundamentally, it's all about understanding, you know, the the the, the spectral spaces and the tensors, and 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 being able to do that in a way that we lack the computing power even a decade ago to be able to do fundamentally to find those those types of insights. And so, an example of something that my company does is is kind of relevancy. It can take my resume. It'll take the skills it'll have. They'll take the job experiences I've had, not so the employers. It'll know my degrees, not my colleges. And then I'll be able to match those against the job description. And then it can rate candidates against that. And that's really sort of predictive from, from that. And then, you know, and so that, that's a lot of what we've seen with sort of machine learning. It's the same sort of thing. It's how your Tesla, when it's self-driving, knows to stop and now knows to turn left as opposed to right. And 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 all of those things are, are, are through that. Uh, but what's missing is experience. Okay. But, and I think to go to your point, yeah. you can maybe teach a, a machine or artificial intelligence to read facial expressions and respond with what seems like caring. But do they have the neural, does it go into the neurology in a way where like when you have your mirror neurons, it's affecting your parts of your brain, so you have an experience. The experience of compassion is different than the expression of it or knowing when to respond. I don't even know if that's a program. There's an experiential piece. It's which psychologist. is central in my right. mind to the self, which I guess is central to being human. Well they have selves. Yeah. Well why don't we why don't we go through a little bit and see here about how generative AI works and what it does when it when it when it when it provides answers. Right. So to write a text the LLM must first translate words into language it understands. So it breaks those into tokens, basic units that can be encoded. Tokens often represent fractions of words, but here, because we're doing a simple answer, each full word is in a token. And then to grasp a word's meaning, it observes it in context of enormous sets of training data, taking note of nearby words. So you take all this text, you scrape all this text, and you figure out, all right, what words are normally next to other words? Mm -hmm. And you have billions and billions of words, and you go figure out all this stuff about, yeah. about what's near. It's just, huh. Eventually, you find words that are alongside work, in this case, and words that aren't found near, right? Like a work of, uh, you know, work in thermostat, common. Work in atmosphere, no. That's not, that's not a combination we tend to find. And the model processes this. It produces a vector. Remember the sort of concept of vector spaces a list of values and adjusted based on each word's proximity to work. And so this is the embedding. And so you can see, you know, how it creates sort of those embeddings for, for the word work. And a word embedding could have hundreds of values, each representing different aspects of a word's meaning because work means different things, right? By describe a house by its characteristics, the values to quantify a word's linguistic features. Multiple meanings. Yeah. The way these characters are derived means we don't know exactly what each value represents, but words we expect to be used in comparable ways often have similar embeddings, right? You can see sea and ocean, football and soccer, I and we, right? They, these are uh, the, these are these are words that have sort of similar primary meanings. Words like sea and ocean may not be used in identical contexts, uh, but their meanings are close to each other, and the embeddings show that closeness. By reducing hundreds of values in each embedding to represent just two, we can see the distinction between these words more clearly. So here you have sort of an X, Y axis and how, how things are grouped. We might spot clusters of pronouns or modes of transportation and being able to qualify words in this way is the first step to a model that generates text. So the key concept is, is self-attention. This is what allows LLMs to understand the relationships between words. Self-attention looks at each token in a body of text and decides which others are the most important to understand its meaning. Mm -hmm. I, I love this. I love it. Okay. Where do we get off thinking we do anything different? Yeah. Right. Well, we're going to get to that question. Yeah. <laughs> Before Transformers, the state of RAI was recurral neural networks, which scanned each word in a sequence, sentence, and processed it sequentially. 
With self-attention, the transformer computes all the words at the same time. This gives them far more sophisticated capabilities to parse language. Right. For example, the transformer here by parsing those sense able to understand that interest is being used as a noun to explain an individual's take on politics. We tweak the sentence. Right. Very different meaning. The model understands interest is now being used in a financial sense. Mm. And when we combine the sentences, the model is still able to recognize the correct meaning of each word thanks to the attention it gives to the accompanying text. For the first use of interest, it is no and in that are most attended. For the second, it is rate and bank. This functionality is crucial for advanced text generation. Without it, words that can be interchangeable in some contexts but not others can be used incorrectly. Yeah. This yep. is what explains when I'm typing something and the machine just changes my words. Yeah. A bit of auto typing when it tries to finish the rest of your sentence. Yeah. 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 Yeah, or also when you put a prompt in, right? This is yeah. my my the editing. Prompt. That's, that's so the prompt, prompt is yeah, it's analyzing that and trying to understand that and then you know create a response to that. This that is my editing nightmare. Right. My job is going to be yeah. gone. Yeah. So if the summary of the sentence was improved, down semantics though. Yeah. So this capability goes beyond words that have multiple meanings, you know, and here it can connect it to dog. Right. And if we swap hungry for delicious, it now refers to you no know, sense that it refers to the bone, right? right? Because it's able to associate the, the pronoun. <laughs> so it, it, this allows LLMs to take context from beyond sentence boundaries, giving the model clear understanding of when and how a word is used. If an English teacher tried to teach all that, mm -hmm. forget them. After tokenizing and encoding a prompt, we're left with a block of data representing our input as the machine understands it, including meanings, positions, and relationships between words. At simplest, the model's aim is now to predict the next word in the sequence and do this repeatedly until the output is complete. In this model, the model gives a probability score to each token which represents the likelihood of it being the next word in the sequence. It continues to do this until it is happy with the text it has produced. But this method of predicting the following word can introduce problems sometimes while each individual token might be the next misfit the full phrase could be less relevant not wrong but not what you'd expect transformers use a number of approaches to address this problem and enhance the quality of their input one example is called beam search rather than focusing only on the next word in the sequence it looks at the probability of a larger set of tokens as a whole with beam search the model is able to consider multiple routes and find the best option this produces better results, ultimately leading to more coherent human-like text. So, man, I, I thought this was a great explainer. Like this is this is this 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 this, 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 this is the this is really cool. So yeah, that was the FT FT put it together, and like it's like I was like. You know, I read a lot about large language. I was like, all right, now I get now. Like, that really excellent. That's yeah. the FT. It's oh. math. Yeah. Yeah. The probability. Times, it's yeah. just adding math to the. So, I'm, so, so let me ask you when we construct sentences, are we doing Is that what we're doing? Yeah. Maybe not exactly. Yeah. Um, but like to think we're doing something completely different in kind and not just a question of degree, I think is, is hubris. I think, yeah. I think to me, one of the big differences. Just from using some language words used before, that the humans, the child, when he's learning language, back to development, is in a much more supervised setting. Yes, they uh, are totally. They are right. being provided uh, a much smaller subset of data to produce their language. Smaller subset, smaller subset, but also more guidance when they yeah, exactly. achieve their answers, That's right? But but here, more, more guidance. So here it's more of a unsupervised, right. uh, which, you know, um, can yeah. I would imagine lead to um, more diversity. Going back to the um, it's, pro, the- It's taking the place of the parent, pro, the pro, teacher, uh, everybody. everybody. Right, right. right. Yeah. but it's more open. Is the uh, but I, I'm gonna keep, I just keep going back and you can tell, just tell me to shut up. But is the um, is our is our AI machine um, worried about anything? What? Is what, it worried? What, what does worried mean? I, you just, I, I keep on going back to that. You know, I, <laughs> does it have feeling? I mean, does it? So what? Know, so what are that, that, have you given it existential dread? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> 
Right. So <laughs> we know emo our emotions, we know our emotions, the the um, response yeah. we have to certain stimuli. There's a certain sophist way. Oh, so oh, I'm thinking of my solipsism. Sol 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 there's a certain sophism problem, I think, because you, we are attributing um, emotions to each other that, in fact, we don't necessarily know that we have. And even on a larger, even if you don't want to say that, um, I don't know exactly what's going on in your mind. And kind of don't know what's going on in their mind either. <laughs> So anyway, are you it's saying we aren't sure that though. the computer? Um, as soon as, wait, uh, wait, Ken. Are you saying we aren't sure just because I can't predict what you're thinking? Are you saying yeah. this computer might actually have existential so, threat, and we just haven't? So I mean, I just go back to you know that famous famous thing with this guy Roos in New York Times when this when the computer's trying to have him uh, run off with her and uh, leave his wife, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, you know these are. If he, if he knew, go back to the Turing test, sure seemed like this person has, or this entity had some feelings. So, of course, they turned that aspect off, but <laughs> there was that. Isn't it a turn? It's pretty good to giving a machine's meaning with emotion. My sensors have become adapted to your particular sensory patterns. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Positive brain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. positive brain, right? But I think you said it like that. Yeah, even from that point, the machine can learn to miss. Did so, I think re recently that Elon Musk has developed something that Neuralink? Yeah, where to figure out what a person is actually thinking and to and to control as well. <laughs> so, yeah. We also have the ability to stick neurons on a brain and to image. What you're thinking, mm -hmm. well, yeah. like a which is I know basically that. the end of a lawyer, right? If we yeah, don't figure that, I bet, out. Bet, literally bet, just bet, plug the guy in. Where were you on the night of yeah, the day? What else are you going to think about that? Like that, the image of you doing it isn't going to pop in your no, head. No, no, because 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 I think it's an established that human memories are not necessarily memories. They are um, true, the but if thing, you yeah. somehow have an image of holding the right knife in the right room with the sun <laughs> angled in at the right angles. Of the Maybe something direct as that. You're but really guilty. A lot of yeah, yeah, right. like, you're guilty. So, so, so to me, you know, when you, when you think about what we just saw from the from the example of on the text, the first the, the, the first the first question I have is right. So. That probably passes the Turing test in some sense. And if it doesn't pass it perfectly today, it's only going to get better and it will pass it in, to whatever level you want in the relative in the relatively near future. And so my question is, is that thinking? And 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 you would say yes. And I would say a little bit, right? I think it's more than syntax. So I disagree with Searle. I don't think that is just at this point a, 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 a syntax, even though it's a lot about word order. I, I, I think it is lexical semantics. I think there's some understanding of the words because you understand how the words are related and 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 so I but I'm not sure it's a full semantic understanding if we uh, for a moment uh, dismiss Wittgenstein's view that like none of us can understand like what we mean at all does it make sense um yeah. and 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 so I think it is a type of thinking I'm not sure it's relatively full human thinking no. That, that, that's no, a, I think that's the same position to take was if all this discussion of thinking will have to lead us to a category of thought that mm -hmm. is larger than merely human thought. Mm. How do you distinguish? Or a subset. You said it's, you know, not intended. Well, but, so, it, we already have, because like dogs, cats, so, so, animals, so, yeah. we already have them as some, you know, subsets. So, 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 wow. so what I would say is that the, the short answer is that, like, I do think, like, look, I think the rabbis were onto something. I think speaking actually is evidence of thought and is something that's uniquely human. And so defining a golem as a creature that cannot speak and to say, all right, humans, you were mad out of this unformed substance, but you have to speak is actually is actually saying something. And then and so, but I think there's but I think the rabbis in thinking of speaking we're thinking of more than just the ability to give a correct answer, right? Because you might be able to do that purely syntactically. I think this goes beyond that to some semantic thought, but I don't think it has full semantic understanding. I don't think anybody can say ChatGPT 
right? It understands the relationship between words, I think, really well. I don't think anybody thinks it really understands what an interest rate is, right? In 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 the sense that we do. So, so the speak rabbi is speaking with the sine qua non of belief, right? Yeah. And, but also creation. So God, yeah. how does God create the world? Is through speech, right? Mm -hmm. Right, and so speaking speaking is something that separates us from from the other creature other created things in the world and makes us godlike yes, but the so. ai is the speaker on it and it says the words right. and now it's speaking so right that makes so it so but so that's, that's what jason i think you're asking is there something different between our speech and the speech of of uh of ai yeah so i so i ai is not one godlike. difference could be chat gpt really doesn't care Whereas I think human beings do have some yes. emotion. So, right? so, 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 so let's yeah. let's set the emotion side for a second. So even if we stay purely in the realm of thought, in intellectual thought, and we're not worried about anything else, I do think there's a difference because I think the question is, am I speaking in a way that makes sense in the context of the inquiry from my understanding of words and the relationship of the words, my deep understanding of language, you know, uh, and 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 having imbibed all that. And then is there some deeper understanding that goes beyond sort of how the words relate to the concepts behind those words? I think ChatGPT does a pretty decent job on the words and the word relations. I don't think it does a great job on sort of the under understanding. And so I would argue that understanding something as simple as like the interest rate of a bank is not simply understanding the nature of interest in bank and things and the relationship of those words, but that is, it involves some a, a, a mathematical concept. Now, if we're going to get to, are there, is thinking the right test? I don't think thinking is the right test for, for this, but the answer I will give is perhaps predicated by the, my third question, which is, does AI have a conscience? So it's interesting that everybody went to emotion. I went to ethics. No, no. That, that, no. that, 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 that's. However, in the Protestant vein of our modern America, emotion is ethics. <laughs> Maybe. Can you give an example of, and I know you mentioned an interest rate, but we give an example of where we would see that a person has a concept beyond the words where the chat TPT may not show the humor, concept, but just does the words. Well, I think chat TPT could tell a joke, right? I, I'm, 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 you know, it's getting better. Yeah. You know, you can, but, 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 funda fun. but fundamentally, we know that it operates through the relationship among among words. And yes, to be able to be comprehended by all of you, I have to be able to construct a proper sentence. But but I, I believe, and you could, and one could disagree with this, like I could very well be wrong and people want different views, but I think that we have fundamental different understandings of concepts. For example, I'm, we're, we're going to talk about ethics right now, right? Does ChatGPT really understand ethics and what ethics is? It can, under, it can make lots of sentences. It can answer lots of questions about ethics. It can probably give you a great summary of Jewish ethics if I asked it to. But I don't think it. But I don't think it really understands what we mean by ethics as. Do more. Okay, so eight billion people in the world. What percentage of the people would you, human beings, would you say understood ethics? Are we, are, are <laughs> but we, I, I, so so I'm pretty high on that, right? Like I tend to, I didn't think humans are pretty smart. I tend to think even the humans we might consider the least smart are pretty smart. <laughs> uh, so I mean, I just there's there's centuries of. Well, Phil's, philosophical debate on what ethics is or is ethics yeah. as a whole, but for the most but, part, but for the most part, you know what right and wrong is. That killing your mom is is not right. a good idea. Right. Right. Yeah. So, right. Or that well, eating your brother because you're hungry concept. is not a good idea. Yeah. So we have a concept of that better than chat GPT. Because I'm sure if you put in, is it a good idea to kill your mom? It probably can spit out. Yeah. Out. So 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 that's a right. great that's it's a great segue. Somebody in. should read the next. Well, okay. which actually is it's from something I've written. Yeah. I saw that. You should read. Who's reading? I'll read. Okay. Machine learning will intensify the gap between technological advancements and the regulations intended to plan for and confine them. This is because ethical and values are highly dependent on cultural norms, personal and group histories, and perhaps most importantly, social hierarchical concepts that an AI does not inherently possess. Humans do not simply call balls and strikes. Humans routinely display acts of mercy and forgiveness, for example, in consideration of social hierarchies. These inclinations may not be conscious acts. 
As another example, we have space in our laws so that human actors, including judges, can account for these considerations. The gap between technology and regulations will widen when developers are not transparent about how the AI makes decisions. But even when they are, the AI by its, by its nature may not itself be able to provide an ethical lens to govern its actions. Ooh. So are you saying that like, so when a judge is deciding a case, it is not just getting the data and spitting out an answer. It's making, it's using, um, it, it's, it's using, the judge is using her human interactions with the defendant, with the lawyers, with everything to, to then, uh, um, to make a, a decision based on more than just data. So like, you're not, you know, they're using, uh, they're using AI to decide sentencing guidelines in some places, right? Yeah. And that okay. takes away, you're saying that would take away ethics because eth ethics is more about the relationship. Well, I think, I think ethics is more about sort of how we operate in, in society. So yeah. let me ask a very, let me ask a very simple question. This is, this is an esteemed group that it, uh, in addition to me, some few other people have gray hair, so I so I know what the laws were. The time. How many people use pot in college? Use pot in college. Use pot in college. I tried it. <laughs> tried it. Right. Tried it. Tried it. Good. No. So 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 I think when most, or if not all, of us were in college, it was illegal. But we did that. Would we consider that unethical? Right. I can take the U.S. code and I can program a computer with the U.S. code and I can make sure you don't violate it. Whatever decision you make, you don't violate any law here. Right. Like that's. That's, you know, AI, now I'm able to consume that amount of information. We can add the code of New Jersey to it as well, so we don't violate any state laws. Yeah. But that's not how we make judgments about what's right or wrong. Right. And it different. it's context de dependent and... And we, relationship dependent. And, rela and, rela and relationship advice. dependent. Yeah. yeah. So what about mandatory sentencing? That, you know, when, when judges, but, you know, it, it, I think has fallen out of favor... But for a while there, yeah, yeah, yeah it, was designed, it was designed to it was, it was designed to constrain that. So, but but you know, but even if one were to accept that, there are lots of examples beyond sentencing. Although I think sentencing is a great. I one. just tried that yeah, as an example. example. Yeah, no, I think that works as an example. But there are lots of things where we make ethical decisions that are different than the logical norm, than the, the the positive norms that we're supposed to follow. We're not supposed to smoke pot, right? At least in you know nineteen eighty nine years, years ago. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because I guess I'm missing missing something. I, I agree with you. I see what you're saying. Um, that you know that this distinguishes humans from from AI robots, what have you. But I guess what I'm struggling with is, um, sure, they're not human, but they could think. They may have emotions. They may, you know, have all these other things. Um, but but you see, but the problem. So, I mean, you, yeah, they're not humans. They're not biological. Yeah, but I, I guess I'm to me to me, and this is this is where I'm going to put all my cards on the table. And this will not surprise the rabbi because he heard the talk I gave in my son's bar mitzvah. This is going to be consistent with that. Mm -hmm. To me, the sine qua non of being human is having a conscience and being able to apply ethical principles. I think the greatest gift Judaism ever gave to the world is ethical monotheism. Mm -hmm. right. I, oh, I just have to say this, but this last line you have here, AI by its nature may not be able to provide an ethical lens to govern its actions. Human nature can't by its own do that either. Yeah, exactly. That's why we have to refer to God or cloak our own ethical norms in divine authority and refer to the supernatural. We struggle with it as well. We we struggle with it, although it's although although I might other, although would you is that is that necessarily true? If I were a Kantian, would I would I, would my would, would I would I not satisfy that sentence if if not in a Jewish way at least in a way that provides an ethical lens for my behavior as as a representative of human rationality does is do we ever do that right I just want to comment on how many people are going to go to Kant I mean right yeah but Kant it's... requires a notion of God as a regulative idea that makes sense of any of it all of that hey I wouldn't be conscious that they are lacking that but we would. I, I guess one other thing I just want to sort of say, or use a charged word here, but I think there's an honor to it. I almost feel there's like this lack of a racist attitude about it in this regard, that we're human, 
we're superior species. <laughs> species is really yeah, yeah. right. And 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 we it can possibly have something else that could approximate yeah. us. Can't he didn't. Organism. He didn't say a pro, He didn't say that. Or, he didn't say there's nothing that approximates us. But he's saying that. But we're. But we're. But I think, yeah. Jason, maybe, maybe are you saying that we as humans can only only have human society, yeah. or that we can only make decisions as humans, and therefore, when you bring in something that's not human, it's still maybe making decisions. It's still maybe. Uh, you know, thinking, but it's not exactly the same as us. So therefore, so it's, yeah, so, so so it's it's not to suggest that AI or or even you know if we get to or, or things something. like like that are not valuable things. It's not that they. I'm not suggesting that we're we're necessarily superior. But the question is, we're trying to struggle with it, is all right. What makes us human? And if and if we go back to Turing and he's trying to talk about like does this thing think? Like he's thinking about it in human terms. He does sort of have the self referential thing that you talked about at the beginning. But if we but if we take that question on its terms, then my argument would be no because you lack the society, you lack the ethical framework that comes from society. You have lack the conscience and the ability to to build those judgments. So maybe here I was unfair to our friend Mr. Boober uh, a, a, a few sessions ago, and maybe we should ground some more things in society, right? Uh, so so maybe relationship. I mean, yeah. I think that's getting at to a certain extent in the yeah. community. Mm -hmm. uh, aren't you able to build uh, ethical features into AI? If you say, I mean, for instance, the marijuana. I, 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 I don't, I don't want to say that you that you can't, right? Because I, because who knows what is possible. I think it is very, very hard yes. because I mean, it is I'm so saying, judgment. It's so judgment dependent. It's so situation dependent. It is so relationship dependent. Right. I don't know how you do that. For your your example of marijuana, yeah, for instance, language. I would say that it's probably ethical to smoke marijuana because it really doesn't hurt anyone. Now you could say, well, maybe there are people hurt by your smoking marijuana because you lost their joint trade. But, 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 but all right, so we say it's ethical to smoke marijuana. So so instead of programming my my machine, with the U.S. code and say don't break any laws, I, I I can I can give it I can give it a different set of rules. But whatever set of rules I'm going to give it is going to be a set of rules. And, and I don't and I do not believe right. like so, ethics has rules, but I do not think that the foundation so, of ethics is. So here I got I have a good Jewish example for this. So this week's Torah portions in Mishpatim and it talks about judges, and then later in Deuteronomy it talks about how you pick judges and the, having a judge is not just the data of the Torah. This is a this is the mitzvah that you do. And this is how you break it. It's mm -hmm. not just that. You need discernment. And you're saying, and discernment means being a relational person, mm -hmm. right? And, and AI doesn't have discernment in the way that a human has it. It can, uh, it can only um, make decisions based on the data. It has, well, we, right? we just went through that it's better at relationships than we are. How's it, it better? It's better at relating concepts to one another. Concepts, we, but, well, not, but that's but that's but not but not but not you know you you say the in your in the paragraph here you say um, it could do more of it. That's right. Yeah. So we have a we also so, we also have a graduate so, from the sociality, like mm -hmm. you're talking about sociality. Mm -hmm. And AI AI doesn't have soci sociality in a community. Yeah, but that's we, the we, same we thing have, I was saying. We have, about... we have a comment from the we have a comment. Yeah. We have, I think that's part of the fear. That's yeah, the fear that the robots are going to create a community. <laughs> they will make judgments that benefit themselves yeah. and not human. Yeah, we, we we have a comment from we have a comment from the chat. So Natalie is saying humans care about relationships with other humans. Humans want to love and need to feel loved. Need to feel that we matter. Humans need to feel part of a community. Humans want to understand our role and the meaning in our lives. Right. Humans also yeah. die. So yeah. Humans, right and so right so we have we have meaning in our lives because we die yeah. right if we didn't die like a computer doesn't die unless we unplug it right the computer we have meaning our life our lives have have meaning okay. because it's short right if what's that <laughs> yeah it's no, but we, we have a nihilist over here yeah. 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 but yes we we die and therefore we have i mean being able because we die, we that also maybe that gives us 
that's a sense of dread, but also empathy for others. Right. And also uh, a sense of urgency, a yeah. sense of Time. of goals and accomplishments, a sense of, uh, of um, you know, uh, you know, just the idea of a hobby, right? <laughs> Even, you know, like if we weren't going to die, why would we, have, you know, what does it mean to try to get better at something, you know? Yeah. So... If you were but eternal, and, right? if you were eternal, and you became really good at hopscotch, nobody would be impressed. Right, right. But you should be by now. Right, if you were like, if you were like, like said that, like everybody, 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 everybody
am I writing them with it? Like, do I describe, you know, is the canonical way Microsoft Word? Is it word processing? Is it yeah. MS Word? Is it Word Perfect? Right, right, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She used to always be <laughs> look for keywords yeah. and then pick mm -hmm. out those resumes to be to look the keywords. And then, yeah. And now the AI can make your resume have the keywords from the job exactly. section. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, all right, everyone. So anyway, all right. That's what Thank I have. You. Thank, Thank you. you. So, friends, so friend, we're coming back together in two weeks, and we'll we'll learn a little bit more about AI, and we'll kind of wrap up and and decide our. We'll answer our question. I don't know. If we'll answer our question, but we'll we we will we will continue the conversation next Thanks. week and try to bring it all together. Capstone event in April. Yes, in the capstone event in April. Happy in April.